through it just in case you do. Well, she's here early. She is. I hear we she's have a, awesome. a, 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 a baptism.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Don't you guys worry about noises. It's okay. It's all right. They're much louder to you than they are to anybody else. As a parent myself, I completely remember that feeling that they were being so loud. But to the rest of us, it's just a sign that the church is growing, and that's a good thing. So don't worry, okay? Welcome to those of you out in the parking lot. Oh, there they are, several of them. Good morning. Welcome. We're happy to see you. Also, those of you who are joining us on Facebook, welcome. We're so glad to see you. And to those who will be watching later on the week, in the week on YouTube, please know that uh, we're delighted that you're here as well. I also want to uh, welcome all of you. Thank you for being here. It's not a very pleasant place. It's sunshiny, but it's not very warm out there. So thanks for coming. Uh, special thanks this morning to Phil Horlocker, who made uh, magic happen and gave me electricity up here. Nobody's allowed to come up and walk in this area because there's cords, so we don't want anyone to get hurt. Not that I think any of you are going to rush, you know, the front of the church, but just in case. Um, but we also, uh, we want to welcome our baptismal family and uh, Nash David Remper, who will be baptized this morning. If you recall, he was going to be here uh, on the baptism of Jesus Sunday and got COVID and so the whole, and the family was sick. And so anyway, we're so happy. We were sad that you weren't able to be with us, but we're so delighted that you're able to be with us today. So thank you so much for being here and for being a part of our worship. Um, we have a uh, worship and music meeting Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, in the choir room. And on uh, February 8th, you'll have choir practice um, starting at 7 as well. And next Sunday, I know you're all excited about the Eagles, right? And uh, I think there's, another team there's another team playing, I'm just saying. Those of us who can't come from the Kansas City area are very, very excited that we'll be playing. Um, what, what a great season the Eagles have had, right? And both teams have had. And so yay to anybody who wins. But next week, I might be wearing a Chiefs jersey underneath my uh, robe, so just... <laughs> no, no, no bets, no bets. I also, I, somebody asked me about praying for a game. I was like, no, I never pray for... No, that, God, I just pray that God lets the right team win and that nobody gets hurt. That's my main prayer. So <laughs> uh, I have no special pull for that. A little reminder... Uh, this week, um, well, actually, a couple of weeks ago, we learned that someone uh, was in the hospital that was, not for, and she was there almost three weeks. She never once came up on the on the list uh, that that we call about. Um, so, if you're in the hospital, please call or have someone in your family call and let the office know that you're there. Um, the church codes are in bold here for you if you, you know, to please let them know. But just that person had said that they were, you know, that, that the code was 404 for the UCC and it still never came up. So just, it's right there and, uh, or ask somebody to call. That's just, just as easy. And also my, uh, my phone number is everywhere. It's on the website. It's on in the bulletin. It's on our machine. And that's my cell phone, so you're always welcome to call that at a time when the office is closed. Okay? Any, uh, Phyllis, what, you want me to, yeah. So next week uh, is, that's what reminded me of the Super Bowl, was we have Super Bowl Sunday. We have, you know, Super Bowl. Uh, and we sell soup, and so... If you still want to make some soup, there's a sign up on the piano. If you just want to buy soup, come next week and be sure. And uh, it's really good, so please make sure and do that, okay? Uh, I would like to, once again, welcome you all. 
and I invite you to join with us as we worship God Almighty. And I will invite those of you that rot to rise in body or spirit. And blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. My friends, we are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let, we are called to... Come, let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Come, join together in the love of God to worship and follow Jesus. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The psalmist sings. Isaiah declares that when we lose the bonds of injustice, and share our bread with the hungry, the light breaks forth like the dawn. 
In, a, in another passage from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, the light of the world, calls his followers to let the light of their good works shine before others. Through baptism, we are sent into the world to shine with the light of Christ. Let us pray, light of the world. Be our light this day. Creator of life. Preserve our life this day. Holy God. Pour out your righteousness on us this day. Light of the world. We gather to praise you on this day with our hearts, songs, and Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins. In silence, we contemplate, a, contemplate the injustices that exist in this community. God of grace, forgive, forgive us. In silence, we lament the ways our community has fallen short of shining a light on God's glory. God of grace, forgive, forgive us. For times when we have let the busyness of life dominate and oppress. Forgive us. For times when we have turned away from needs and troubles of and in community. Forgive us. Guide us as we practice righteousness and conduct our affairs generously. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. God has heard our prayers and comes with the light of mercy. We will share this good news. We will praise God's name. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Um, so we have a surprise baptism today because of Nash not being able to be here the last uh, time. So you guys, I'll give you your cues and you, I think you're going to be fine. We're not going to sing any words to Child of Blessing. We'll just have a little bit of the song while everybody gets assembled up here and we'll we didn't find out until late Friday night that we were going to do this. And so it's, uh, you don't, I'll help you participate. It's easy, you guys now. So anyway, um, we're thrilled to have both uh, Nash's uh, parents, Brian and Nicole, and also Brickell and Kristen to come and be sponsors. And so uh, we invite them forward. I'm going to ask you guys to be over there, thanks. Dominic, that's great. This is going to be your job. When we get to the very end, you're going to dry him off with this. I'm going to ask you to hold it the whole time because I get this place very wet. And, uh, you know, you keep it safe. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi there. How are you? You look awfully cute in your little suit there. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I see what you say about him growing out of it, though. <laughs> okay. 
Members and friends in Christ, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and the seal of participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of new growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Baptism is both God's gift and our faithful response to that gift. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water, we rise with new life, one in Christ and members in Christ's body. You have brought God's child here to receive the sacrament of Christian baptism. As a sign of your faith response, faithful responses, I ask you to make the following promises. Do you desire to the parents, do you desire to have Nash David Remper, bap- you know your name, yes you do, I, I saw that, <laughs> we've only seen each other on Zoom thus far, so he's wondering who this weird person is, yeah, you're not going to like me in just about a minute, uh, uh, do you desire to have Nash David Remper baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ, if so, please answer, we do. And now for all four of you, will you encourage Nash to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please answer, we will with the help of God. Will you, and again for all of you, will you teach Nash that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior? If so, please answer, we will with the help of God. You can't. I need the words, sorry. You can't have that. Sorry. You didn't like me one bit there. I saw that. Yeah. And all for all of you, do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, and to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please answer. We will with the help of God. And do you promise, according to the grace given you to grow with Nash in the Christian faith, to help him be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering uh, the nurture of the Christian Church so that he may affirm his baptism? If so, please answer, we do with the help of God. Okay, Tammy, I'm going to, where's Tammy? Oh, you're... Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Friends, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them gifts of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this baptized one as he lives and grows in Christ? And this our love, support, and care. You can all say that together. We promise our love, support, and care. Great. And now I'll I'll give you uh, these as well. Let us unite with the church in all times and in all places, triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ that sin may have no power over him. Create new life and Nash baptize this day that he may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and who is and who always shall be. World without end. Amen. Okay. Um, and are you going to hold him? Or you want? Yeah. Okay. He's, he, he's a bit of a leaper, so she's going to give him... All right. Uh, okay. Hi. Can I hold your hand? I'll give you... Uh, I'll ha- we'll, we'll tilt him in a minute. Just hold him just like that for one second. Nash, when Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God was there, saying, You are my child, my beloved. In you I am well pleased. Likewise, Nash, at this very moment, 
I see what you mean. And at every moment in time, God's spirit, God's breath is with you, for you too are a precious child of God who is loved and blessed. By what name will this child be called? Okay, and you can tilt him, tilt him now so I can get him really, really wet. Okay, are you ready, buddy? No. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> Nash, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One God, mother of us all, the Holy Spirit be upon you, Nash. Child of God, disciple of Christ, member of the church. Uh, do you want me to say the words? What are you say? Okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Yep. Okay, good job, Dominic. Very good job. And you take that home with you, so you guys Jesus do that. Said, I am the light of the world. We now give a lighted candle or encourage you, Nash, that you might shine. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And these are for you guys. I'm doing the, read, the readings of Psalm 112 to 1, 112, 1 to 10. Psalm equates those who delight in God's commands with those who rise as a light. Our actions have consequences. The writer praises those whose acts are gracious, merciful, and righteous. Those who act justly, they are not broken by adversity, but secure in God. Righteousness endures. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their home, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They will give freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. I'm going to be reading from the epistle, the first Corinthians, from 1 to 16. 
uh, though people such as the Corinthians are enamored with human uh, philosophy and wisdom, Paul continuously presents God's hidden wisdom, which is Jesus Christ crucified. True a spiritual mat matur maturity involves judging ourselves and others in light of God's revelation in the cross. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit of the, and, the, and of power, so that your faith might rest now not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. We who are down to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed, decreed before ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the human heart conceived what God had prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit, searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is written? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are not uh, unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are, uh, else's, those who are spiritually discerned, all things, and they are sometimes subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who, for who we know the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, we, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Thanks be Amen. to God. Thank you, Gail. In the Sermon of, on the Mount, Jesus encourages his followers to be salt of the earth and light of the world, doing good works and keeping God's commandments. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Listen to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated be in the spirit of prayer. God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you by your spirit. Show us the things that we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them through Jesus Christ, our brother and savior. Amen. And now I'll invite any children that might like to come forward to come down. You want to come, Dominic? You want to come down and join me? No. Okay, that's why You don't have to. No, no problem. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and just talk a little bit with everybody then here. Because in the sermon, you're going to hear a lot about salt. You're going to be sick to death of the salt things. But Jesus also tells us a really confusing thing. He asks us to be light and I don't know, what does it mean to be light? I mean, we can't put a, if I hold a light bulb in my hand, I can't make it shine. If I tried to swallow a candle, that would not work well for me. I think that being light is coming and sharing with other Christians. It's showing ways of love and of light in your daily life. Like maybe talking to somebody that you don't normally talk to on the bus or somebody who looks a little bit lost or sad means uh, making some dark places for other people light. That's what Jesus did best. And because we love Jesus, we can light up from the inside. <laughs> up here on the, excuse me, my cough drop didn't work. <coughs> up here you'll see a whole bunch of salt and some light too. And so as you hear the sermon, I hope you'll understand why salt is so important. It seems unimportant to us today, but light and salt, they're the key to God's love. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Holy and gracious God, help us to be light for you and to shine your light and share it with everyone we meet. May it be so. Amen. So salt has gotten a bad reputation in our culture, right? Our cardiologists said, cut it out. And even though they told us that, we still crave salt. I think most of us crave salt. Humans actually require a certain amount of salt for survival. We have some nurses in the, today, a million years ago, I was a nurse too. And um, 
We used to give patients salt when they needed to get their, their when they needed to be hydrated quickly. Individuals who eat too much salt are certainly at risk for developing bad things like high blood pressure and strokes. And those learning to eat more healthy quickly learn that they need to limit daily salt, at least to a little bit. But they quickly discover if they learn to read labels that salt is found in an oversupply in our food groups. Cheese and butter and margarine and snack food and all kinds of canned goods, processed foods, soy sauce. Soy sauce is a bad one for salt. But, it's, and it's also used in many, many foods as a color additive or a binder or an element that gives texture or a control agent in, in making bread. Salt is super inexpensive in our culture. And in addition to small amounts of salt for the table, we buy it in 40 pound bags for use in water softeners or on slick winter sidewalks or by the dump truck load to melt ice on roads and bridges. Of course, in the way in which modern people view salt abundance is everywhere. And it's decidedly different from those centuries ago, from the scriptures that we've heard this morning. Because in biblical times, salt was very rare. It was hard to obtain and considered a very precious commodity. In fact, it was often offered as part of a bride price, considered part of a treasured dowry from a, wo from a woman's family to her groom's family. So with that understanding, maybe we understand a little bit better why Jesus used the image in today's gospel story. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus used an analogy that they could easily understand and to let them know that he expected something extraordinary from them for the sake of God. He placed a high value on them and on what he required of them, just as the first century placed a very high value on salt. He taught his followers to act for God in ways as important and as varied as salt was in their world. Our being salt to the world would help others learn to make life special. Christians around the world can provide spiritual seasoning that adds joy and gives life more meaning. It keeps our lives from being bland and unrewarding. We season it with Christian commitment and understanding of God's love for his children. Being salt to the world means adding flavor to life wherever and wherever possible. It means adding a zestful spirit to life and love. It means pursuing meaning in all that we do and in all that we encounter. It means acting in love with all whom we touch. In Jesus' day, salt was often connected with purity. The Romans believed that salt was the purest of all things because it came from pure things, the sun and the sea. It was used by the Jews to purify their offerings to God. And we modern Christians are asked to be salt of the earth. And we must then... If we accept, be a pure and high standard in our speech, in our thought, in our behaviors, keeping ourselves away from the world's self-centeredness. Jesus calls us to be a cleansing presence, constantly witnessing to the good that is found in God and the values of God's realms. In ancient times, salt was valued as a basic ingredient of a good life. As salt in the world, we also serve as a basic nutrient for others. We become nurturing agents for those around us, caring and helping, enriching, teaching, and bringing them to know God's enormous love. 
Salt was also used to aid healing. As salt in the world, we can promote healing throughout, through prayer and caring for others and in supporting the least and the lost, the lonely, holding hands with one another and administering the holy oil of anointing. We would also do well to make an application from the use of salt to ice and thaw the roads. As salt in the world, we help melt the iciness of life. Frozen relationships can be melted by applying the warmth of Christian love. We can take that love and wear down the indifference or the lack of feeling that often overtakes us human beings. Salt has for centuries served as a preservative to prevent food from spoiling. If we as salt in the world become preservatives of God's goodness, we can help to prevent spoiling wherever we find it. We are committed to preserving Christian principles that keep ourselves and others from going bad. Something that Jesus didn't say in this particular scripture, he didn't tell his disciples to become the pepper of the earth. Pepper calls attention to itself as opposed to salt that when properly used only highlights what it flavors. Jesus didn't expect us to call attention to ourselves and our salting efforts. Rather, we're, we are to make others feel that their lives are more meaningful because they encountered us. That, they're, that they find us more loving people as a church and as neighbors in the world. We can focus on the immediate context of Jesus' charge for his disciples to become his salty followers. It came immediately after his expression of the Beatitudes. So seasoning takes on the character of the values he was highly valuing. We talked last week about how those followers were just his, that initial Beatitudes were just given to his immediate followers, the people that he loved most. It was like his pregame pep talk, and I think the salt of the earth is exactly the same. Because for salt to become effective and to do its wor work the best, it has to be released from whatever container it is in. And God can release us from whatever trips us up so that we can truly salt the world. God can release us to do the work Jesus commands and make a difference in the world, giving hope where there is no hope, forgiving where there is, has been sin, embracing when there is loneliness and despair, tolerating where there is prejudice, reconciling where there is conflict, bringing justice where there is wrong, providing food where there is hunger, giving comfort where there is disease or distress. Jesus empowers us to purify, to heal, to nurture, to thaw the frozen, to preserve and to season the people of the earth. The power of God supports and sustains us and stands with us if we risk whatever it takes to become the salt of the world. And when we fail in our efforts, as we often do, God will raise us up and renew us and give us strength to persevere again and again and again. Salty Christians don't need to go on a spiritual salt-free diet. Let us rather become the salt of the earth. Let us reach out to our communities and a world that's desperate, desperately in need of the Christian seasoning As Christians, let us remain committed. Let us accept the responsibility to make ourselves and others a more well-rounded people, people that are holding on to the values that Jesus gave us. We know that salt makes the world a better place and it makes Christians better as well. May we all go from this place and be salty. May it be so, amen.
gonna bite you. Together, let us state the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. You may be seated. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways you have tolerated or, and practiced injustice. Merciful God, our prayer. inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we should we we know well, Br bringing healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Mer meaningful, merciful God, receive our prayer. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, raise your leadership to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels. Put an end to hunger and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way especially those on our prayer list and those known only unto you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, our prayer. we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. And now Jesus calls us to let our lives and our work, salty, bright, and good, Give witness to the reign of God in our midst. Let us generously offer our gifts of time, talent, and treasure that the glory of God may be recognized and celebrated in the world.
Let us pray. You can make a difference through your gifts. 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 We can make a difference through our gifts. You can make a difference through your gifts. Loving God, receive and bless our offerings, and through the Spirit, work joyfully with them. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. The Lord will be with the. We're having a prayer. The Lord will be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his righteousness, by his glorious uh, resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We praise you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives.
seated. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are now ready. As we prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament, we remember that we are part of a living body of Christ in the whole world. And we come to this table with different needs and we come in different ways. The bread represents our brokenness, so I ask you to partake when you are ready. When you eat of this bread, remember that it is the body of Christ, broken for you and for me. Let the people say amen. 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 And as we partake of this, the cup of blessing, we acknowledge our unity in Christ Jesus. So please hold your cup and let us partake as one. My friends, drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Let the people say amen. amen. Now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, each one, unto everlasting life. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, uh, love, kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. As people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around you. As you go out to give a living witness, as you go out to testify to God's love active in the world, go knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hope and the fears and the tears. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus.